Hello, welcome back for the Lion Star MLB DFS breakdown for today. Cinco de Mayo, happy Friday, happy May 5th. We are back and we are going to break down the slate. Before we do that, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you're not already, become a member of Lion Star. It's only $29.99. You get access to all of our props, all of our DFS. You get it all. Now, let's jump into the slate. So, as always, we will go into ownership. Before that, quick rundown with weather. Looks like uh, Philadelphia is the only spot that we're really concerned about. Uh, early reports look like it. They may the storms may miss there, or it'll be light enough rain where they can play through. However, keep watching that spot because I think it is an interesting one uh, to play today. Now, let's go to the projected ownership. Get over to the pitchers. We got Corbin Burns leading the way. Almost 26% owned, 9,300. That's just too cheap for the level of pitcher that he is. I know he hasn't been totally himself yet this year. As uh, you can see, 3.9 FIP over the last 20, but that is up to 3.9 over the last five starts. And his K rate has just been down almost 26% over the last 20, and it's at 21% over the last five. Luckily, though, the Giants like to strike out 26.6% K rate for the Giants versus righties. So it does make it a decent spot here. His stat cast data has been okay. Um, I think Burns is going to figure it out probably fairly quickly. He is a very good pitcher and uh, combined K rate almost 24%. So I like this spot for him. I do think he's probably a little too cheaply priced especially in this matchup. Uh, so I'm fine playing with him. Max Freed, another guy. He's just too cheap. This Baltimore offense has been extremely good lately. But in Freed, we're talking about a guy that over his last five starts has a 2.1 FIP. Over his last 20, 2.76. He has been extremely good. He doesn't have the high K rate as everybody else, but at his salary, he is extremely interesting, even versus a good offense. So I get why ownership is going there. I will absolutely have some of him as well. Uh, next, we got Sean Manaya, 5,600. Now, this is way too cheap for Manaya, but Manaya is prone to getting blown up. So at this ownership, you know, you make your own decisions if you want to gamble on it. He does have very high upside, 30 point, high 20 upside with his decent K rate. Uh, he is against Milwaukee, who also strikes out a lot. 28% K rate versus lefties for the Brewers. So there is major upside in this slate or in this spot here. And uh, Manaya, 26% K rate over his last five starts just shows you that there is big time upside 28% combined K rate. He is super cheap. Ownership is going to be here, but just realize how up and down he is. He's had five of his six outings this year have been bad. One good outing uh, with ownership here. You can make a case to fade him or go with him. I think the reason ownership is here is his, for his, Medium projection, me, median projection is going to look really good. His range of outcomes is extremely wide, though. So he could be negative four or he could be 30. And we really don't know which one we're going to get out of him today. So I could see you guys going on either side of this. And you could play both sides of this. You could have some giant stacks and then also have uh, Manaya. So it's an interesting spot there. You can play both sides. Another spot, as I had teased a little bit in the intro with the weather, is this Boston versus uh, Phillies game. Chris Sale, I think, is in a really good spot, high volatile spot. He can either have a really good game against this team or they're going to get to him and get some home runs. So one of the things I want to point out is the BVP data in 41 plate attempts, 
They're hitting 154 against him and have an almost 44% K rate. So we got a spot with a real high upside, but this team does have Bryce Harper back. They might start hitting. Trey Turner seems to be hitting a little bit now and uh, turning around. They also have a 26% K rate versus lefties. So this is one of those spots, kind of like Manaya, where it could go either way. Uh, now, I do think at this stage in both Manaya and Sale's career, Sale is probably still the better pitcher, but he is in a, he's in a similar spot where he gets blown up or he has a good game. It is not much in between. So I like both of them. Uh, for this one, watch the weather, though, because if there is a chance of in-game delay, then you probably want to stay away from Sale. Uh, and also... If sales ownership gets nuts, you may want to play Philadelphia a little bit because we know they can hit home runs and we know sale can get blown up. Next, Christian Javier. He's against the Mariners. You know, this is a guy that I is extremely good pitcher. He has big time upside, just hasn't quite shown it this year. Mariners are a good team. Um, hard for me to get super excited about that. But if you want to play him, go with it. He's a great pitcher. Uh, Wheeler is in the same spot. Once again, Boston has been meh. They're not a great team. Uh, however, they have been a little hot now. Wheeler can pitch well against anybody. Castillo is one that I definitely want to bring up. This Houston Astros team has not been hitting like years prior, striking out almost 23% versus righties. Low Woba, low ISO. Do not be scared off because it is the Astros. I actually really like this spot for Castillo. 2.9 FIP over his last 20, 2.23 over the last five. And that comes with a solid 27.6% K rate, 28 over the last 20. So I like this spot for Castillo. And then also the BVP data shows a 35% K rate, but that's a super small sample size. So don't take too much into that i would look more at the 24 percent combined k rate to get an idea from his upside but castillo is a great pitcher i think he's in a great spot and i will absolutely have some of him especially if he's coming in in this ownership here a couple other guys that i think we could pivot off uh cheap wise there's merrill kelly 6800 i think he's in a good spot tyler anderson there's upside just like Manaya at a similar uh Similar price, but just no ownership here. Uh, then Dane Dunning. Dane Dunning is kind of interesting. He is going against this Angels team that we know this Angels team can hit. However, Dunning does have some upside. Uh, however, I do worry about how far they're going to let him go into the game because he hasn't really gone over 70 pitches this year in his long relief role. Uh, because of that, I might stay away from him. And that's about it. I... As you guys know, I'm a Padre fan. Big series this uh, this weekend versus the Dodgers. However, I'm probably steering clear of Darvish, which I hate to say, but uh, you know they they've done decently against him. It can go either way. I just think this game is going to have a ton of emotion, and it might kind of play like a playoff game just because of it being. Uh, one of the first times they see him this year and the playoffs last year. So let's get into FanDuel here and check ownership over there. Wheeler is coming at highest owned. Again, check weather off that if you want to go with Wheeler. Javier is next. Burns after that. I like that burn spot. Max Freed. We got Montgomery. I love this spot for Castillo. I think on FanDuel, I would be paying that salary and likely going to him uh, quite a lot on FanDuel. Now let's go back and look at some stack attack. So no Colorado on the slate, which is good. The highest owned is likely coming from this uh, KC Oakland game because the game total is 10 and KC is all over the highest owned. But with it being 11 games, with their no Colorado, ownership's going to be kind of spread out. So you can play KC 
without ownership concerns if you want. I think they are in a very good spot. Mueller has been a meh pitcher, 5.8 FIP over the last five, 4.5 over the last 20. We got, you know, good weather in, in this game, decent ballpark. So I absolutely understand if you want to eat the chalk a little bit and go with them. Cardinals are one that I am very interested in. I think this team can really hit the ball. They have been struggling a little bit lately. However, they just put up a big game yesterday. And if this team gets rolling, I think we're going to be able to ride them a little bit. They're an extremely good hitting team. And all of their salaries have came down a little bit, so they're not super expensive anymore. Uh, against Matt Boyd, 4.5 FIP over the last 20, 4.8 FIP over the last five. He's a meh pitcher. So I do not mind that spot for them whatsoever. Mets are in a super good spot. The one thing with them is they just haven't been hitting very well. Uh, Senzantella, just not that great of a pitcher, giving up almost two points uh, per plate attempt. And let's uh, check out some other spots here. Highest projected lineup. We got Texas and Atlanta and the Dodgers all are here. Texas is interesting. Tyler Anderson is a decent pitcher. He was extremely good last year. Got off to a rough start. As you can see, his last five, 6.18 FIP. But his last 20 is 3.92 FIP. So he has been better over the long run than he has the short term. Worries me a little bit going with Texas. But this is another spot where I think you could play either side of it. Uh, Dean Kramer, I'd be all over this, uh, Braves team. They've been starting to hit pretty well here. Ozuna has, uh, started to hit pretty well as, as well. I say that in particularly because all you Braves fans have hated him for, uh, the first month of the season, but he has come around, especially, uh, Ryan Humphreys has hated him and, uh, Dodgers against Darvish. Some of the guys, for the Dodgers have some pretty good splits there. So I get it if you want to go there. Uh, Value-wise, Washington is all over the value, as well as KC and Oakland should pop up a little bit as well. Oakland's really interesting to me. Interesting to me. Keller has been meh, 4.98 FIP over his last 20, 4.78 over the last five. They can absolutely get to him, and this Oakland team has been interesting. As far as Washington goes, I'm not – Overly excited to go to their stack. I think uh, Kelly is a better pitcher than most believe he is. 3.97 FIP over the last five, 4.11 over the last 20. That's solid. Not great, just solid. Um, now if we go to ceiling, it's going to bring up Texas again here. Texas is all over the highest ceiling, which I get. It is Anderson. We just don't know what's really going to happen there with Anderson's pitching. And the Dodgers pop up a little bit. Uh, and if we go to the highest FIP over the last 20, Josiah Gray. Now, this is an interesting one. Gray has been very good this season. 3.12 FIP over the last five. But over the last 20, he's that pitcher we love to pick on last year. They gave up a ton of home runs. This Diamondback team has been exciting. They've been running. They got some power been scoring some runs and I don't mind going there against gray. Uh, I don't think he is the pitcher that has a 3.12 FIP. Um, and if nobody's going there, I'm interested in it. Uh, and if we go over the last five starts, then Sean Manaya pops up. Now Manaya is interesting to stack against just because he is a little bit higher owned. We know he can get blown up. The Milwaukee uh, team does have some good bats as well. So a lot of interesting ways we can go on this slate. Uh, let me know what you're going to do in the comments here. I think this is going to be a fun one. Happy Cinco de Mayo, guys. We will see you next week. And good luck. Have a good one. Bye.